So today on the podcast, we have a special guest. Her name is Amira Hall. And Amira is a gifted clairvoyant, spiritual medium, and quantum healing pioneer with over 22 years of experience. She is a world-class psychic mentor and a master of spirit communication. She's an international intuitive life coach, author, and spiritual mentor. And after healing herself, which we get into her story a little bit on this episode, from an autoimmune illness, she had a near-death experience as well while traveling in Egypt that opened her up to follow her deeper spiritual calling. And so now Amira is dedicated to providing spiritual tools and guidance to seekers going through their own ascension process, reaching higher levels of awareness. And so it was a really powerful uh, episode. So yeah, but Chris, what was your experience yeah. with it? What would no, you say? I was gonna say? I was going to say like, she's a very genuine person. Like I really enjoyed the conversation and she really seemed like she wanted to help people. And then just bring everything down to like the basics. Like, how mm. is this, like, how can you actually use this in your life? And I really yep. appreciate, um, you know, people who are like that, especially like teachers who teach things that are maybe not so as mainstream, you know, mm. or it's like really trying to connect to people and be like, all right, this is how it's actually going to work in your life and how it's actually going to help you. And so I really appreciated that, that part of our conversation. Definitely. And, and I think that that speaks to just that like contrast of like what we get into in this episode with like spiritual waking and healing and energetics, like it could be very lofty or esoteric, but mm -hmm. that's what I really appreciated with Amira is that like pro she provided some like grounded actions or tools and uh, they're, they're in there, but you got to listen for that. So yeah. as you're listening to it, I would recommend like really tuning in because they're, they're honestly, she dropped like some bombs of like truth and like tools that like, yeah. it was honestly like literally like 10, 15 seconds in this episode. And then we went on more to like, again, like the lofty kind of things, but like there's, there's some gold in here if you really dive in yep. and listen. Yep. So yeah, dive in and we hope you enjoy it. Welcome to the Science and Spirituality Podcast, where we dive deep into universal spiritual principles and ground them in modern science. My name is Chris Carton. And my name is Kevin Carton. And we are committed to simplifying the spiritual side of success for you with easy to understand scientific research so you can walk away with practical tools to create radical transformations in your life. Let's get started. All right, so let's get into this episode with Amira Hall. So looking forward to this conversation, especially with, as you were mentioning before we started recording about like where we are in the world now and human history and just where we're going, like spiritual awakening and healing is such an important topic. So welcome to the podcast. We're really looking forward to diving into this with you. Thank you so much. I um, am really delighted to be here. It's fantastic to connect with you guys and, and your mission, what mm. you're doing to spread the light and hold the space for uh, increased conscious awareness within um, you know, our peers and whoever is ready for the next step. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, let's dive in and just have you share just like what your experience was in the past and your journey to where you are today. Because I mean, I, I've looked at your website, your work, and I mean, yeah, as we shared your, your bio, like you're doing incredible work in the world, but I imagine it wasn't always that way. So yeah. that's like what brought you to this work. And yeah, tell us more about your story. Well, thank you. Um, I, <laughs> I sure didn't, you know, plan it. That's for sure. You know, when I, I'm a Canadian, um, I married an American and moved to the States and launched into corporate America, um, you know, on the success track, um, doing very, very well back in the 90s. I was a six figure income earner, a real high achiever. And then what happened was my marriage fell apart because I was going to school and I graduated magna cum laude and I reached, you know, one of the top 10 sales um, leaders, executives in for this company nationwide. But I was burning the candle at both ends and my relationship suffered. Um, it started to fall apart. At the same time, my dad died and I was soon diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome. The doctors told me death or wheelchair. Wow. So I was super depressed. Uh, I was grieving not only my marriage and my circumstances and being alone in the U.S. with no support system is, is extremely traumatic. Uh, within a month and a half, two months, I was fired because I couldn't work. Back in those days, they just, they just did. Mm. So there I was in really, in the, in the early 90s, it was 1991, there was no internet. There was no place to research and find out what the hell was going on to me, for me. I, you know, truly a dark night of the soul mm -hmm. and every way and 
trying to, after the doctors closed the doors on me, basically, I think that was a turning point after, you know, a short amount of time of processing um, where the journey started for me, even for 30 years, taking independent care of my health and personal responsibility and not trusting um, some of their decisions because I proved them wrong, right? And I've helped so many people heal themselves and, re, you know, return their vitality um, by some really old-fashioned down home farm remedies and i mean that by simple basics healthy food you know rest quietening the mind with meditation mm -hmm. yep. and um, the very simple basics and unplugging from the noise and the rhetoric and and the fear that you know of what everybody else is telling me you know so that's where it all started and um you know, my journey to healing myself took a couple different turns. I started to make a few projects, small entrepreneurial spirit in me. Then I started working with jewelry and handcrafting some semi-precious jewelry, but I was playing with the stones. I was connecting with the vibration of these rocks, these semi-precious stones. And I believe that was incredibly healing for me, not only the color and the vibration, but stones have a vibration, they're, they're earth. And it was really a channel and a vehicle um, for me to, um, you know, with permission. Like it wasn't woo-woo or like nowadays everybody's into crystals and, you know, <laughs> essence. And <Yep. laughs> that is not, I, I want to say this. I've been dying to say this to people. Those things are wonderful props. They Ooh. are not going to facilitate your spiritual awakening. And, you know, there's a lot of influencers that are sort of flogging and pitching and pitching these rocks and crystals and, oh, just ohm and do that. It's not, it, I'm sorry. That's, it, it's beautiful. It might set a tone for your room, but it is not mm -hmm. going to shift the energetic blacks. Mm -hmm. That's what I help people do. Yeah. No, I think that's a good point, what you just brought up, because I feel like, personal development and just the like that whole entire world has gotten so popular and I feel like there's just a lot of people like you said influencers who are or who are kind of saying specific buzzwords or or or, or kind of uh advertising specific products or like a quick way to get to a certain place and a lot of people if that's their first kind of introduction to that world they can really become missled into thinking that it's just an easy fix when it's not because the the human body the like even the human mind it's so complicated it's so interconnected that it's it's not just one thing it's about you know kind of the way i like to put it is like getting out of your own way so that the your your human intelligence can take over i feel well, like I'm, I'm gonna i suggest that we look a little bit beyond that because when i had later on i had a near-death experience about a, 10 years after that whole experience, as I got healed and, and I took myself to the Amazon, journeyed with the shaman in the Amazon, and then a year later I went to Egypt and that's where I had my near-death experience. And I talk all about it in my book, um, The Essential Guide to Spiritual Awakening. But, but here's what I want to say to that, is that we are multidimensional beings of light. You know, I'm... I was so challenged in 1998 when I got that awareness because I stepped in what I, at the time, called it, well, is this the matrix? Mm. I didn't know where I was, but it was, it was frequency. It was a vibration. And we are mental beings. We are linear thinkers. We want to have things to be tangible for us. But we're coming to a point, I think, in our discovery, neuroscience and, and quantum physics is helping us piece together all of the parts. But I think there's a shift when we can kind of let go and say, I am frequency. And at first and foremost, before I came into a body, before I was aware that I had a mind, I'm frequency. Okay, so my responsibility I feel here on the planet is to teach people and remind them that mm -hmm. you are pure in that form. You were perfectly programmed, like clean and crisp, fresh, brand new software. Mm -hmm. You know, you plugged into some hard drive, some vehicle, you know, our, our Earth's and, <laughs> and, 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 you know, and I like to tell this metaphor, you know, 
when you're a soul of vibration, you come into mom's, into the womb, and you are beginning to grow and form. You don't know anything but the womb. And as are you consciousness yet? Well, I guess there's the debate is out on that, but you begin to vibrate. You match the frequency. That's the word I use. You match your mother's frequency. It's safe. You, that's your home, your zone, her feelings, her vibration, her thoughts, her experiences are something that you don't know isn't you. And you literally sponge it into your space, your energy field that begins to grow with your body. Then you're born. You match your father's vibration. You continue to match your friends at school, your teachers, the system. And it goes and goes and goes. When you go get a new job, what do you do? If, if you come in a suit for your interview and everybody's wearing dockers and polo shirts, before you know it, you've switched into that, right? Because you don't want to be the oddball. Well, nowadays, everybody tries to be odd. But there's a, still a, a thread of, of uniformity and, and being accepted. That's because we all want to be loved and appreciated or validated for who we are. So when we continue in that vibration, we hit puberty. <laughs> can you remember? <laughs> I mean, it can get messy for some of us. And what we're trying to do in, in our state of rebellion is push out, extract mom and dad's energies or anything else that isn't our soul's blueprint. And so nobody taught us that, that all we have to do is start releasing that. You know, instead, what we do is we start to get grounded. We, you know, do all these crazy things and we're trying to find ourselves. We're just trying to connect with that original blueprint, that original software that we came in. And some of us start earlier than others. Some of us continue rebelling our whole lives and don't know why and want to blame our parents, etc. But, you know, when you start taking a neutral perspective to it, that it's just an energy. And my near-death experience, I saw a timeline. And I saw on the timeline from birth to that point in my life, all my thoughts and all my feelings and where I held on to those were actually what created my dis-ease, my dysfunction, and my meltdowns and all the other trauma I faced. So my job was simply to identify it, kind of like malware, and extract it. And you know what? that formula seemed to be pretty cool and really simplistic. And that, I'm the, that's the kind of girl I am, bottom line. Give me, tell me one, two, three, what do I got to do? And I'll jump in. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to waste 20 years in therapy because I tried that a couple of years and that just was an absolute tire spinner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Have you done that? Personally, I haven't in terms of therapy, but I know Chris, you have, but yeah, I, I see what you're saying with this. And I think just to bring it back to like what Chris was saying to like what I love, I mean, that whole share that you just had, I mean, just that's, I mean, truth, right? Like how can anyone refute that when it's like, we're so clear and just aware and seeing that in our own lives and like the blocks that we have. Mm -hmm. And uh, since uh, Maria, this is the first time you meet Chris, like Chris is actually a, a acupuncturist, like an oh, so intelligence of, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Like the body, like I think that's what you were meaning by human intelligence, right? Right, it's like right. the intelligence yeah. your own okay. body. Like well, yeah. and, and you know what was interesting is the first person that I went to when the doctors told me death or wheelchair, mm -hmm. I was guided by a friend who was in acupuncture school in San Diego. And she sent me to Dr. Ni, nee, who was a, a Chinese American, no, just Chinese. She was brought here to educate the school there. And I got treated with her. And Dr. Ni nee said to me when I told her what my prognosis was, she said, uh, well, we don't look at it like that. In, 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 in Eastern medicine, she said, we just open the energy channels. Nice. And she told me that my mind was too busy and that that was my big problem, right? And it was true, absolutely. But at that point in my life, I couldn't understand, what do you mean it's too busy? Because I've been yeah. living in it. It's like being in the forest. You don't know you've got a monkey mind. You're, it's so erratic. But Dr. Ni nee was instrumental for me. So I have high regard for acupuncture and chiropractic. Um, and uh, yeah, Dr. Nee, I saw, I was in such bad state. I would see her twice a week. 
um, probably did that for almost a year. Wow. It's, yeah. it's I, w I was so sick. I couldn't crawl to the kitchen to make a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was really, maybe I was close to death. I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I don't look at that part, but you know, she helped me shift my focus. And I think that's key. What was I focusing on the disease and what somebody boxed me in and defined right. me as having. Right. So my clients are often say to me, Oh, I've got chronic fatigue and I just want to you know, snap. It's just yep. like, you know, snap out of it. No, we've got to change that picture first, right? right. Before we can make any headway. And Chris, yeah. don't you, don't you find that with your, with your work? Yeah, I would say, and I was going to say that, um, it, it's just so interesting because a lot of people, when they're given a diagnosis of something, it's almost like they take it on as now this is who I am. And when that happens, it almost does start to integrate into a part of who you are because you're so tied to what that is. And so that's why I think like people who are in um, positions where they're diagnosing people, they have, they're in a position of a great responsibility to not, when they are going to give a diagnosis to say that, you know, there is other options. Like I would never, I would hate to ever tell someone that, no, there's no way, like this is how you're going to be because that shuts down possibility in someone's mind. And then if your mind's shut down to any possibility, there's no way you're going to get out of it. Like you're, you're, you need, you need to have, you need to be open. Well, we close down the opportunities to meet someone else with another solution, even if we don't have one. Yep. Um, and, and so since that time, I've always been like, no way I'm going to go find something natural and something that resonates with me before I go to, to, you know, allopathic medicine. So that's been my journey. I know there's a place for it. Yep. I'm not dismissing that or, but I'm not a doctor and I bet I know my body way more than any of my doctors that I went to see. Um, recently I had some last year, as we know, everybody was so super stressed and I had some challenges with neighbors and little kids. And I went to the doctor, my blood pressure was really, really high. And she told me, she goes, Oh, you got to go on statins and you've got to do this. And I said, I refuse that. Absolutely. I think this is stress induced. I think I'm not going to take anything. And I just went home going, why did I even go, you know? It's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah. We, we have the power to heal ourselves. And yeah. it's not that I've been completely clear of any, you know, challenges physically for 30 years. I've had my bumpy roads, but I've taught people how they can release a headache just with an energetic grounding cord like much like with you would maybe you do the little balls in the ears or yeah, the, or little pins in different places yeah. yeah that's my that's one of my favorite types of acupuncture is auricular in the ear because it's it's you can access the entire body from the ear um, i love it too usually usually less less painful and people it, it relaxes people really quickly and yeah that's yeah. a big key to yeah. to healing is getting the getting the nervous system to relax because then the body can do what it's supposed to do like the body's intelligent and knows what to do and a lot of times we get in the way with thinking we get in the way with what we eat we, we just get in the way like a lot of stuff gets in the way and it doesn't allow that energy and that intelligence to flow in a way that it was designed to and so um that's what i think the beauty of acupuncture and all these other types of modalities too anything that can help calm your nervous system down it 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 focuses, it focuses the body so that it can do what it's supposed to. It's powerful. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I think we haven't even hit the tip of the iceberg with it. I you know, it. It's really an incredible thing when we're, when our mind and our emotions, um, when we can release that emotional attachment, mm -hmm. because I think that fuels, you know, the debilitating conditions yeah. as much. Right. And mm -hmm. I know for me, I'm a very sensitive person. I've always been sensitive and I didn't realize I just, you know, tried to fit in with everybody else in the corporate world and really turned off or, or invalidated. My family didn't validate my special abilities. And uh, of course we're all special and we all have spiritual gifts that have been turned down. So I've been spending the last 22 years helping people activate and connect with those spiritual gifts whether it's clairvoyance, whether it's clear audience, your natural healing abilities, um, all of those things are there for us. And I believe we're setting into a time of our superhuman, supernatural, super powerful abilities are coming to the forefront.
Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, if people are afraid of disease, what the hell are they going to do with these supernatural <laughs> abilities? Yep. <laughs> okay, I'm going to just walk through that wall in a minute. <laughs> 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 yeah, no. Um, so, yeah, we're coming into a very exciting time. I think there's going to be a tsunami of people leaving us. Yeah. But um, it's, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, when into your journey did you realize that you needed to be sharing this because i know it kind of sounds like in the beginning of your journey it was more of a you you were all going on a journey to heal yourself absolutely find out answers for yourself when was that switch where you thought you know what i gotta start sharing this well when i came back after the near-death experience my clairvoyant abilities were turned on so loud i had to learn how to turn them down I knew things that I didn't understand were, I hadn't discovered Deepak Chopra or any, I mean, there were, he was probably the pioneer of that whole, um, you know, sort of public disclosure or discussion around that. Um, And so I didn't even have a word to define what I was seeing and what I was doing or accessing. So once I started to, to, I had to clear my energy field of fear and my trauma and drama. And I, I remember telling one of the coaches that I was working with at the time, an energy healer, she, I said, well, don't, you, don't even think for a minute that I'm going to do this professionally. <laughs> <laughs> I, was just, I was just <laughs> ornery and feisty and just, you know, I had my heels dug in every step of the way. But I think what, what happened was I was still struggling with some of my um, energy and I was all of a sudden decided that, well, it was strange. I went to the farmer's market and I remember going in there and there was no people in there on a Saturday. And I was thinking, there's something really wrong with this picture. This place should be hopping and popping on a, on a Saturday morning. So I said to the people, I can help you. <laughs> and they looked at me and I said, I read coffee grounds. And I'm like, what in the hell did I just say? <laughs> it just like started coming out of my mouth. And I, I said to them, look, well, okay, keep in mind, this was in 1999, okay? So here I am in like a little suburbia outside of San Diego telling them I can read coffee grounds. They've never heard of such a thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I got back in my car and I said, oh my God, who was that that came through my mouth and said all those things? And then I got in the car and it was so loud and strong. Now go to six more coffee shops. <laughs> it was like I had a boss that was talking to me through the, the radio speakers. It was the most bizarre thing. And I did. I was obe- obedient and I, I made that week a plan and a strategy. And I hit up six more coffee shops and I made a whole schedule to go out and read coffee grounds just because I needed to be out of the house. Nice. And so spirit tricked me. I got really tricked into it and then I had so much fun and when I was looking into the cup people would say to me how the hell did you see all that in in the coffee grounds and I said well I'm actually reading your energy has nothing to do with the black cup I'm looking at you know Mm -hmm. so that's how it started and before I knew it people were asking me to teach them what I do and so I realized, okay, so I started doing that. And it was really organic. It created my programs and, and practiced with people and had, you know, it, it was a lot of fun and it just kind of continued. And then I started taking groups to Egypt mm-hmm. because that's where it really got switched on for me. And life became multidimensional in ways that really blew my mind and that I, um, I got, I got, I, maybe I got addicted <laughs> to the rush, to the fascination, to the, to the stretch, the mind bending, you know, ups and downs of dynasties. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was really, for me, it wasn't the history so much or even the architecture, although that all blows your mind. For me, it was an energetic remembrance because mm-hmm. when I first got to Egypt, I felt like I was home. And so it was just the strangest thing. And I've heard so many of the people that come on my tours say the same thing. Man, I feel like I'm home. Mm -hmm. So there's a a familiarity of people that are joining me and are going there 
it's like, yeah, we're remembering. We're remembering. Mm -hmm. Kevin, Kev, you went to Egypt. Do, do you want to talk about your time a little bit there? Because I feel like you had some pretty. I did. Yeah. Uh, that was actually one of the, the I had, um, uh, as you mentioned before we started recording that you're like the, with the group that you're going with this year that like, you're going to be going to the King's chamber. Um, the, I had my first out of body experience in the King's chamber. Um, cause we had like a 30 minute meditation. I mean, as you know, it's pitch black in there when you turn the human made lights off, like, and I was, I was somewhat expecting <laughs> something to happen. But that actually was, I, I noticed like halfway through the meditation, it was actually a part of the block of like me, like trying to make something happen. But okay, once I yeah. let go and just like, all right, like, it's okay. Like I'm going to let go of that expectation that boom, it shot out of my own body, went up into the stars, just had this three or four second experience. Honestly, it was very quick of just being connected to literally everything in the universe and knowing that I am more than my body. I'm more than just this human form and that. I, I'm a soul that is eternal as we all are. And that like, that experience just blew my mind because like, as soon as I was like, had the thought, oh my God, this is cool. Boom. I dropped right back down to my right. body. Well, so. that's why before the show, I was asking you if you had ET or alien, because I do see the star system around you mm. and I was picking that up. So congratulations. And thanks yes. for, for sharing that. I appreciate it. For when sure. were you there? 2018. Okay. And, so or February, 2018. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, one one of the times when I was in the King's Chamber, I've been back 12 times now, mm. so it's truly second nature and second home, but one time we, so was everybody chanting while you, did you lay inside no. the sarcophagus? So what we not. get our folks to do is each take turns laying in that granite sarcophagus, mm. and, and the, the acoustics in the Great Pyramid is, I think, the highest vibration or uniformity on the planet. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's incredible. Pristine. Right. And so we would all stand around, the group stands around the person in the sarcophagus and they just chant Om. Mm. And everybody's resonating and in and out of, and it becomes this amplified, you know, reverberation. Mm. So in my vision, one of them, I remember these masters coming down, descending this staircase. And I'm like, oh, it's my birthday. It's like, oh my gosh, they're coming to greet me. And there was a long procession of these in incredible beings. And then they got down in front of me off the, off the staircase and they, the line split. And they said, we're the masters of the light and we're the masters of the dark. Now they looked identical and they said, and who do you follow? It was almost like an initiation type thing. Of course I follow the light. But it was interesting and a great spiritual lesson because sometimes what we think we're dealing with uh, might not be the light. Mm -hmm. And so it takes a great amount of discernment um, to fet out that, you know, the truth. But once you've connected like yourself, you, you had that resonance, that experience, and you can easily come back to that. Some people mm -hmm. get lost when they go out and space, or they're lost in space. Yep. <laughs> or they come back. See, this is what happened to me. When I left the body and came back, that day I traveled from Egypt to New York, New York, Atlanta, Atlanta, San Diego. And from Luck, uh, when I got off the plane, what, 20 hours later from Luxor to the same day, everybody looked like black and white paper dolls. And they were walking and it was like a two dimensional flat paper dolls. And it was the most creepy feeling, anger and fear and depression. And I, I was thinking, this is the United States. I don't want to be here. Mm. And before I knew it, I merged with the land of paper dolls. And I had been living in that vibration. And we all are. Mm. Um, so we're now at a phase in, in sort of using those terms of snapping out of that amnesia, that stupor that all of our souls have fallen from that, the great golden age of 15,000 years ago, 12,000 years ago. So we are coming back to remembering. That's why there's, a, I believe, a great resurgence in meditation and awakening. And what is this? What is yep. this? There's like, like a, a whisper everywhere about yes. Yeah. Chakras and meditation and crystals. That's exactly. It. <laughs> yeah. I honestly, I, I really believe that Chris, Chris and I both like have seen this. I mean, with our podcasts, I mean, just for the name science and spirituality, 
it's so amazing to see just how many people are interested in this just idea and topic. I mean, sure, we talk about tons of different things, but overarching and a lot of them, like, because we get statistics on this podcast, it, the majority of people that listen to our podcast are ages 20 to 35. So it's really inspiring to see that the younger generation is more and more interested. Not that it's, you know, on any, like literally any, every generation, there's people waking up, but to see that as a mass, at least just with the statistics that we have, it's just mm-hmm. incredible to see because well, it's here. And, and, you know, the, the um, analogies that I use, I've been using for 22 years and I'm always ahead of the pack, it seems, but using these quantum tools, they're like an app. When you start Mm. looking at them, drag and drop, delete, you know, in the trash, you know, um, Android apps don't work in an iPhone. If you think of mom's energy as an Android and you're the iPhone, then you're like, oh shit, no wonder that app was all messed up. It's no big (laughs) deal. Let's just download it and restart and reboot. So it just becomes a boom, 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 and we're not attached. Mm. And, And I think that power of neutrality kind of like a spock attitude right just not be emotionally engaged with it um and the less drama the better okay and um yeah quick and easy it doesn't have to be long and dragged out Mm -hmm. but having specific tools are key in my book my opinion my book my experience definitely so speaking of which if there, because uh, obviously, like what you were sharing is like the awakening. People like actually like feeling, hearing that whisper. There are many people I know that are listening to our podcast, and especially this episode, hearing this and like, oh, it sounds so interesting. Where would you start someone off? Like, and I wouldn't say like maybe like straight up beginner, because I think anyone listening to this episode or podcast is interested in this and had some awareness. But if there's anything that, especially, I imagine that it would be like coming through you. If like, so we're, you yeah, might share to help someone. We're, we're, we're all beginners. Um, Mm. But the first thing I start with everybody on my website, I have Stress Buster. It's a free download. It's 15 minutes. It's a quantum energy visualization, meditation, but it's it's a tool that's like an energy shower. Mm. So you're not leaving your body like we do in most meditations. The goal here is to train the spirit, your frequency, your vibration, and your mental connection to this present time, being present in your body with what you're doing, fully conscious aware. And we all need to practice that because when we think Tahiti, our spirit just went there, Mm -hmm. went to the Great Pyramid. Now we're back. And I'm sure everybody listening, you're all, you were all in the Great Pyramid with us, (laughs) right? That's how the mind works. So we have to be trained how to be present. When we're more present, Our body can feel safe or at least be aware so that we can release these unconscious and and conscious like fears and blocks and doubts, beliefs down a safe way to the earth, like release it like a normal grounding cord. Mm -hmm. That's what I use and teach in Stress Buster. So when a person can start feeling safe, when the body feels relaxed, then we can safely let go of the baggage the unseen burdens that we're carrying. We don't even know we're carrying. Yeah. Ancestral. I believe a lot of people in that age group you mentioned are are not only, um, well, there, there's a lot of things they are, but one of the things is to hear, hear to clear ancestral programming. Yes. So you might not have a lot of life experience or baggage from this life, unlike a 40 or 50 year old, However, you've got ancestral baggage and you've got ancestral memory that isn't necessarily baggage. You know, da, 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 da. we're here to Luke Skywalker, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we're here to take, you know, to the new frontier. And um, so light bearers. Yeah. Mm. But being in authority of your energy field. Yeah, I and I think that. that generation is especially bad in their head. Mm versus being fully present and awake and holding a vibration, building the frequency. Because quite honestly, in my book, uh, Manifesting Miracles 101, mm-hmm. I don't know. There we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah, we can see it. Yeah, this is kind of a guidebook that I um, I wrote. It's basically from my mentoring program 
all the steps that I take people through, the practices and the exercises for each chakra. We go through the eight major chakras and then we explore out of body. Mm. But the big training for us is to learn how to manage the energetics from our chakra system. Wouldn't you say, Chris? Yeah, no, I was going to say that that's a beautiful place to start because there's really no point of expanding outwards until you can get everything right inside. And I feel like a lot of people want to skip that part. Oh, and they are. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, mm. that's, that's problematic. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> you know? and, and they think they know so much. Yeah, they might be a star seed and all these wonderful buzzwords. But the problem is you haven't got, I believe we contracted for a body at the soul level. We came here to have a human experience. So if you're just sitting there oming all day or, you know, dancing with the fairies and unable to manifest, right? You're, the purpose here is to create. Mm. What are we creating? Consciously, that is. Mm. You know, because a lot of people are making a lot of messes. <clears throat> and we are here to each consciously learn how to um, I believe maneuver our vehicle so that it becomes healthy and vibrant at a higher frequency so we can naturally and easily and effortlessly manifest. So we're guided into the right paths and, and with the right people to create harmony and healthy environment and relationships. So yeah, there's a full package <laughs> that we've got a, we've signed up for here, but it starts with the body and the mind. And today I got a message in my meditations is we're in a phase of integrating mind and heart. Mm. How do we do that? Right? You can't think your way into the heart. Mm -hmm. And it's not about, oh, I love my neighbor, you know, and all these nice things. But I, I, they sh my guide showed me, like, if we could just do that now, just imagine in the center of your head a little gold ball. And it's spinning and it's rotating. And then that little gold ball just rolls down into our heart, into our chest area. And it can just expand, filling up the heart space. So now we can continue this conversation with a blend of head and heart. And can mm -hmm. you feel the energetic shift? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, and so if we could practice something as simple as that, that really takes us to a whole new level. And if somebody else is having a meltdown or raging on the road, you know, car next to us, we can, we can be in a place of just, okay, buddy, I wish you well, you know? Yeah. Mm. Because yeah, these right. have real life practice. That's, that's the work I do is, is making it all real, integrating yeah. mm -hmm. it in every day. And yeah. whether you are working a job and I'm thinking of a client right now, you guys are in Phoenix, aren't you? I'm in, I'm in, Char uh, I live in Charlotte, North Carolina, but I'm currently in Miami. And, Miami. Okay. And, and how I'm about you? North Glen, Colorado. It's just North of Denver. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So I have this client in, Fe in Phoenix. I don't know why I was seeing Phoenix there. He wants to tell the story and he's got a regular job. And actually his wife was my client mm. and she passed away last year. And, um, so he's had a long journey of healing um, the grief, etc. So we started doing work together and I just started clearing the energetic blocks and connecting with her. And all I do is extract the energies that are not his. So I can see that myself clairvoyantly. And I, and he, I said to him when we started, I said, well, what would your goal be of all this? And he goes, you know, Amira, I've been a musician all my life, but it's just sort of mediocre. And, you know, we play gigs and he's pretty active. He's, I think in his sixties now or fifties, well, I'll tell you what, within three months, they had so many gigs. Their whole band is so busy and he's always played the, the bass, but he's wanted to play the guitar more in the band. And he just, and, the, and the band leader wouldn't let him play the bass or mm -hmm. the guitar. He just put it, put down the bass and picked up the guitar. And next thing you know, people were coming up and videotaping their, their, their gig. And so this is, and he's got, He's literally made so much money from that, 
that he's now resurfacing the pool and doing some major bathroom renovations. And, you know, he's not, money's not, uh, the original goal was to replace the job. Now he's quite content just doing the job and doing the pretty much full-time music gig. But that's what can happen. He's so happy. He's got a new woman coming in his life because his vibration is higher and he's in alignment, right? He's listening to his passion and his calling. His voice is getting stronger. Usually when we get older, the voice starts to crap out, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. His is getting better. His music skills are really improving. The guys are all kind of wondering, man, you are the, you are the model, you know, grief recovery guy. <laughs> mm. It's but yeah, it's, it's just releasing the energies. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I mean, the, the connection you make with like, a, like you know, practical like real life, you know, like it's got to be totally real. echo that. I mean, for myself, I mean, I work with clients as well as a coach. Like it's like, what's, what are we doing here? You know, like even in the spiritual work, it's like, well, what's the purpose of it? Well, it's sure to high, vibrate higher, to like evolve, ascend, grow, but we live in, in this human experience. In my near-death experience, I was told that you are a creator. Yeah. You know, and so my job here is to create. Now I get to make a mess if I want, or I can clean it up and, you know, make some bigger and more wonderful and really help people along the way. So I think that's my gift and my ability to help people connect with their gifts and abilities. Not everybody, we're, we're all a little bit different, right? We're all the same, but we're also very different. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. It's really exciting the time we're coming into mm -hmm. to watch people really blossom very quickly. You know, when I started this work professionally, it would I would take people through my mentoring program. It was a one-year program. Now it's 10 weeks. That's how fast things have gotten. And I, mm -hmm. I was really reluctant to do that because there's as much of an integration process with the work I do. I don't just, hey, throw these online tools at you and then you're on your own. Because quite honestly, you're going to stop because <laughs> you're going to fall back into your default, the comfort zone, right? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, in, in the, the mutual arrangement that I work with a person to so supporting them so that they can reach a higher vibration and hold it. Mm. It's like going to the gym. If you don't keep trying with different weights and stuff, right? You're not going to really progress. You're just going to stay at the old, the, the threshold that you're holding for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's why it's so important to have a coach too, because it's so easy. Like, I mean, Kev, you talk about this all the time. It's so easy to get pulled back to the familiar that you, like, it really helps to have someone there that's guiding you, especially in the very beginning, because that pull to the familiar is very strong. And you can't see what you can't see. Yeah exactly it i like to say my clients are climbing a ladder and i'm holding the ladder you're getting to the top it's getting shaky i'm going one lift your foot two more inches two more inches okay there you got it okay <laughs> keep taking another step because it's scary up there because as we do our work the deeper more profound it gets the more shaky it can become and the lonelier mm -hmm. it is at the top the air mm -hmm. becomes thinner it becomes very uncharted territory. You know, when you left your body, Kevin, I mean, this can be extremely frightening. Some people do it once and go, man, that was just too much of a trip. I can't handle it. They don't know what it meant or where they went or, or how to repeat it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's going to be happening to a lot of people. And I think there's going to be, and I'm witnessing already spontaneous, um, awakenings were and, and that freaks people out to just mm -hmm. be able to hear things and read minds and um <laughs> and just know things that they don't like some of it you know some mm -hmm. of it isn't fun well follow up question to that then because this i mean this connects with something you were sharing before is that it's subtle all of these like energies and like this i mean awakening i mean obviously the experience of it like once it's there it's not subtle sometimes but it is working with subtle energy. So what, what would you like, especially someone going through something like that, like what support or what way in which like do you, that you help them in terms of working with that subtle energy? Well, again, having some basic tools that you can come back to the ABCs mm. and whenever anything feels uncertain, come back to something that 
you know, you can repeat that's consistent. That's where the science comes in, if you ask me, you know, and that's why I call them quantum tools, because it gives us a pattern to plug into where our safe zone. Mm. Um, and that's the other reason why I, with my coaching program, every single week, we have a conversation because as you're moving through the energetics and reaching higher frequency levels, you're still, you're hitting and shaking up unconscious energies. And so I go in behind and I sort of extract it like a little psychic vacuum so mm -hmm. that you can keep raising your tone, your frequency. Otherwise you'll hit that threshold and you'll stay there. And what I found is um, for all of us, including myself, I will only reach a certain level at my crown chakra of access of information unless I have somebody higher than me that can see where I next need to step mm -hmm. or how I can achieve that next threshold. So that's why having somebody that's well trained with a fully developed and open, clear chakra, by the way, you never want your crown chakra to be wide open. Um, because that brings in every kind of, I mean, look at how many million people are there on the planet or billion people? Seven to eight Very billion. billion at this point. Okay. Yeah. They say that we got some doper gamer, doper, how do you say the that? Doppelganger? That, yeah, Doppelgangers. that. But even with that said, how many different faces and shapes and colors and imagine in the unseen world? It's even more gazillions more yep so uh i just think like that that we don't know what we're going to encounter mm. and the wonderful possibilities also absolutely so you want to you know have some s steering mechanism you know i just don't go to the bad part of town and hang out unless i want to invite some trouble right mm. Absolutely. So when we're too wide open with the crown chakra, that's what happens. And when people do a lot of drugs and do some damage, they can literally blow their chakras open. And that's why I believe, uh, doctor, you may have an opinion on that, is, is what schizophrenia is mm. and bipolar is. You're literally channeling other entities. Mm. And you don't know, you're not, energy field isn't strong enough to extract them and keep them out. I have worked with schizophrenics and they have improved. The problem is they didn't have a support system and they only stayed with it for a short amount of time. Sure. But you know, same thing with addictions. The reason you're addicted to a certain alcohol or, or cigarettes or whatever, you've got a being or an entity that's plugged in and it's controlling that behavior. It's not that you don't have any willpower. It's an energetic, literally like a, what do we call it? A component. Mm. plugged in and it's plugged in on a picture i call it a picture it's like a snapshot and think of it as malware or a virus something comes in you have to get that seed or that core not that i'm an expert in this so if anybody's listening to this and going oh my god she's so pathetic that's right i am and 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 we can we have to extract the core or where that entered mm. then when i can find that then i remove it and close it up, close the doorways, close any windows. So this is perfect analogy with, you know, virus scanning or our apps. Um, you know, we want to have security. We want to have that firewall fired up. Yep. And, and having a strong energy field is key for that. Anybody that tells you, oh, I just bring in the white light. You know, I'm sorry, but that's BS. Hmm. And here's, here's why. Energy is always moving. You can't stop it with some freaking energy shield. Mm -hmm. Even me, I've been, have had psychic attacks. Having the ability to see and follow the trail and to be able to close it and extract it is the key. If you can't or you don't know what to see or how to see it, then, then you need help. Absolutely. Especially when it comes to these realms, because again, like most people are beginners. You even said is we're all beginners, but there are of course people that are at a higher degree of beginner than others. So it makes total sense. Yeah. To have that kind of support. And yeah, it's incredible. It's fascinating too, honestly. It is. It's and every single person I, I read, I learn something new about the way the world or the universe works. Right. Mm. So honestly, about 20 years ago now, my guides told me to stop reading 
So I'm not reading these sci-fi books or any of that. Every now and again, I'll watch an ET or a UFO movie or something, but they come to me and talk to me. I don't need to tune into some <laughs> scientist that thinks they figured it out. I communicate with the Arcturians. I communicate with the cryon energy and, and um, they're, they're my teachers. And I, I, I learn as I need to know because there's just too much information that again, it's like trying to you know, funnel all this energy and information. What good is it for us to know how to maneuver in the stars? We gotta figure out how to be here. <laughs> mm. Exactly. That's incredible. I mean, it's very, I think our curiosity is, is perked, peaked because we come from the stars. Mm. And so 100%. we want to remember, and we are light and love. We are a vibration of that blend. And we want to remember what our, what we're capable of. Why, why have we come here? We're here to remember. That's as simple as that. And it's all in my book, um, the essential guide to, you know, spiritual awakening secrets to soul development. Mm. It's not whether you're a carpenter or you're a musician or you're a great coach or not. It's about how strong your frequency is vibrating at because you've come here to heal yourself and those around you just by raising your frequency. Then it doesn't even matter what the hell you do, mm. in my opinion. And I don't wanna be programming anybody. <laughs> We're all here to be deprogrammed. Definitely. But that's, those are my thoughts that I've, you know, discovered and they resonate and they feel right. So I keep saying them. <laughs> exactly. And I say taking the shopping cart approach too, because I a hundred percent agree with you. Is that like it resonates with you and it's not, you're here to say like, this is the way like programming others, but it's like, here's an opportunity or invitation. It's like this information has worked for me. And the shopping cart approach is for sure. It's like, if you go to a, a grocery store, you're not going to take everything off the shelf. You take what you need. Yeah, I don't even go in the middle rows, you know? I do my <laughs> peripheral shop. And, yeah, all the fresh. Yeah. 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 The live food. Try to, yeah. And so, you know, it, we each have our discovery process. I remember a teacher telling me a long time ago, Amira, just stop with the checking out tire kicking, you know, all these different modalities. Um, because that can be confusing too. And that just adds more confusion to your energy field. Mm. And so, you know, I get people calling me or talking to me. Oh, well, I've watched, you know, have you started your spiritual journey? Yeah, I've watched, I, I, I listen to, you know, 528 megahertz uh, YouTube um, videos when I'm sleeping. Well, that, I'm sorry, <laughs> that's, that's a nice start. <laughs> that's not it. It's more internal than anything from external. We've got to do our work. Yep. It comes down to doing the work, digging it out. Um, streamlining your frequency. I just like mm -hmm. to go back to that because then there's no blame. Mom and dad did their best. The environment we grew up in, the culture, all of our experiences were here as perfect teachers. Mm -hmm. And so we're not here to blame it. We're just here to let it go so that yeah. you can be neutral. Remember it. It's not to wipe out your memory. Have the memory of it, but not have the trigger of it. Mm -hmm. Those yeah. buttons pushed. That then, well, then you'd be out of business, wouldn't you, doctor? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Same. We'd all would, right? <laughs> well, Maybe. that's where that's where I think we're going to. You know, the age of Aquarius was a golden age where we could literally have this conversation and go, oh, Amira, your energy's a little low today. Beep. Oh, there you go. You know, just like a <laughs> yeah. plug into the wall socket. Mm -hmm. Effectively, we're all doing that anyway. Just getting better and better. And at some it. of us have real shitty energy. <laughs> so that's <laughs> not really good. <laughs> yeah. Right? Mm. That's amazing. Well, awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, just to bring this in for our landing as we're coming to a close with the time, um, this has been fascinating, the conversation. I mean, so many different tangents that we could spend probably an hour on each of them. Um, but is there any final thing that you want to share? Uh, obviously before, like, you know, you'll have an opportunity to share, just like, you know, where people can connect with you. Obviously you mentioned your book programs, all that. But any final message uh, with this conversation we've been having? Yeah, the journey is a process. It's not a flip switch. Um, and each time you think you got it, you know, you don't. And, and so when we start to explore it with like 
you know, going where no man has gone before. That's for each of us exploring this new world. Um, it is a process of discovery and being sort of going, learning how to go in the flow with change and uncertainty and being able to trust our intuitive abilities. That's, that's my main thing is driving people to understand and turn on and really plug into their natural abilities because we're going to need them mm -hmm. more than ever. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll just leave it at that. No need to go Beautiful. into fear, but when we have those, when we're aligned with our superpowers, then we can shift an energy no matter what dynamic it takes. Mm -hmm. So I'm here to empower that and to help everybody shine. We're going to need everybody holding hands, shining bright, mm -hmm. holding a vibration that we want to see in the world, you know? Exactly. So, yeah. So thank you. Thank you for holding the space. Welcome and thank you for being here and sharing your message. And as you mentioned, it's even more importantly, sharing your light. So oh, thank, thank you. you so much. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, yeah. So like you said, like, where can people find you, connect with you, anything you want to share as we close out now? Yeah. My website is www.amirahall.com. And I think you'll probably put in the show notes. Yep and spelling yep. but there's yep. two h's and two l's mm -hmm. and please download the book please download the stress buster just if nothing else just start practicing stress buster 15 minutes a day you can't break it you can't do it too much just don't drive and listen mm. okay <laughs> so sure. i just want to keep everybody safe in that way so and, and and things will start shifting if things are really going haywire in your life right now just start listening to it and i promise you things are going to smooth out within a week you know, just being consistent and flushing it out. Beautiful. Awesome. All right. Thank, well, you, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. And well, thank you again for the conversation. This is amazing. Okay. Well, I'll look forward to the replay and, and share it with my audience too. Sounds good. Awesome. And that's it for today. So thanks for tuning in. We really hope you enjoyed listening to this episode as much as we enjoyed recording it. So any questions, any comments, connect with us on Instagram personally at Kevin F. Carton or at Chris J. Carton or our podcast Instagram page at Science and Spirituality Podcast. And if you feel guided to, the one thing that we do ask is for you to please rate the podcast and also leave a review. This way we can reach more people and in that way impact more lives. So with that, we'll see you on the next episode.